let us go to the next example. So, here we have a vertical uh, frictionless piston cylinder arrangement. Uh, this contains initially 2 kg of water at one bar. So, the piston initially rests on these two stops. Okay? And uh, when the pressure inside reaches 3 bar, the piston will begin to move. So, the volume uh, when the piston is on the stops or the volume occupied uh, by the water when the piston is on the stops is given to be uh, 250 liters. Now, we transfer an amount of heat equal to 4500 kilojoules. We are asked to determine the final state of the water and the work done. Uh, the initial state we have. Uh, uh, we have the volume which is uh, known. So, V1 equal to 0 0.25 meter cube. Mass is also known 2 kg. So, which means the specific volume is known at the initial state and the pressure is also known at the initial state. So, with these two uh, pieces of information, we should be able to locate the state, initial state. Okay. So, the specific volume at the initial state is 0 0.125 and the pressure is uh, 1 bar. So, you go to the uh, pressure table, the steam table and you can see that Vf is uh, equal to this and Vg is equal to this. Since the given specific volume lies between Vf and Vg, the initial uh, state is a saturated mixture. Okay? So, we can now uh, show this on a PV diagram like this. So, this is 100 k pa. So, the initial state is a saturated mixture which looks like this. Now, we add heat uh, to the contents of the cylinder. Notice that the uh, volume will remain a constant until the pressure inside reaches 3 bar because at that pressure the uh, piston uh, will start to lift. So, the uh, working substance undergoes a constant volume process from 1 bar to 3 bar or 300 kilo Pascal. So, let us say that this is uh, 300 kilo Pascal. So, the working substance undergoes a constant volume process from 1 bar to 3 bar. Let us denote this state as state 2. So, what we will uh, try to do is determine the amount of heat that is required to go from state 1 to state 2. Notice that at state 2, once again, two uh, uh, pieces of information are known to us that is the pressure, which is 300 kilo Pascal, and specific volume V2. Remember, V2 is equal to V1. Okay? So, using these two uh, pieces of information, we can actually locate the uh, state. Okay. So, uh, for process 1, 2, if we apply uh, first law, we get delta E equal to delta U. Again, no change in Ke or Pe. W 1, 2 is 0 because it is a constant volume process. Displacement work is 0. There is no other form of work. So, the heat that has to be supplied to go from state 1 to 2 is given by this expression. Okay? So, at state 2, as I said before, P 2 is 3 bar and uh, V 2 is equal to 0.125. So, we go to the pressure table corresponding to 3 bar, we get Vf equal to this, Vg equal to this. Since uh, V2 lies between Vf and Vg, state 2 is also a saturated mixture state. So, when I showed state 2 uh, to be like this, it was an educated guess and that it is a saturated mixture. But now, with uh, the information that is available, we can precisely uh, state that state 2 is a saturated mixture and we can evaluate the uh, dryness fraction using the known volume, a uh, known specific volume like this and that comes out to be 0 0.2048. And the specific internal energy may also be evaluated at uh, state 2 and that comes out to be 967.15. So, the heat uh, that has to be supplied to go from state 1 to 2 is 794.238 kilojoules. So, that means of the total 4500 kilojoules that is supplied, 794.238 goes uh, to raising the state from 1 to 2. Now, we supply the remainder of the heat uh, to reach the final state. Notice that once uh, state 2 is reached and the pressure uh, becomes 
300 kilopascal. If I supply heat any further, the piston begins to lift. So, if I look at the, uh, if I look at any intermediate state, let us say this is an intermediate state. If I look at the, uh, if I look at a force balance on the piston at any intermediate state, the uh, forces on the piston are the following. One is uh, pressure force from the contents of the cylinder in the upward direction. The next one is P atmosphere in the downward direction and the pressure due to the uh, weight of the piston which is also acting downwards. However, notice that these two quantities the P atmosphere and the weight uh, pressure due to weight of the piston remain constant during the process which means that the contents of the cylinder undergo a constant pressure process as we supply as we continue to supply heat which means that the uh, so the uh, the process looks like this we do not know where the final state is going to be whether the final state is a superheated state or whether it is a saturated vapor state or whether it is still uh, uh, a two phase mixture or not or not remains to be seen. So, that uh, depends on the amount of heat that we are supplying, but this is the process line. So, that gives us an idea. Okay. So, now we apply first law to process 2, 3, we get delta E equal to delta U equal to Q 2, 3 minus W 2, 3. Notice that displacement work in this case is non-zero, it is a constant pressure process. So, P d V integral P d V is easy to evaluate, P comes out of the integral. So, we can uh, write this uh, first law in this form and if you rearrange this expression, Basically, what we are going to do is take this uh, term to and combine it with this term here and bring the U2 term to the uh, right hand side. So, we rearrange it like that, then we get the specific enthalpy H3 equal to U2 plus P2V2 plus Q23 divided by M. Okay? P3 is equal to P2, so I have used the fact that uh, H is equal to U plus PV. So, now uh, once again we have uh, two property values at uh, state 3. One is the pressure which is 300 kilo Pascal. The second one is a specific property which is the specific enthalpy. So, if I plug in the values, I get the specific enthalpy to be 2857. So, we now go to the pressure table and uh, we notice that Hg corresponding to 3 bar is actually less than H, uh, H3, which means that, uh, so H uh, G corresponding to 3 bar is less than H3, which means that st uh, state 3 has to be a superheated state. So, we, we go to the superheated table now and um, we can get the um, uh, specific volume at uh, state 3 to be equal to 0.71. 0, 3. Let us just quickly take a look uh, to see how we use the superheated table. So, we have been given the uh, pressure to be 300 kilo Pascal or 3 bar. So, here we have 3 bar and superheated table, superheated steam 3 bar and we are also given the specific enthalpy to be uh, 2857.53. Okay, so, 2857.53, so we go down the, uh, the enthalpy column, 2857.53 is going to fall in between these two entries. So, we interpolate and get the final values uh, that we require. Linear interpolation in this case is sufficient or if you have uh, software tools by entering, just by entering the pressure and the specific enthalpy, you should be able to get the final values. Okay, so, we interpolate to get the uh, specific volume at state 3 to be equal to this. So, the work interaction uh, for entire process 1, 3 is equal to work interaction during 2, 3 because W 1, 2 is equal to 0. It is a constant volume process 1, 2. So, we can evaluate the work interaction during the process to be 351.18. That is, uh, that is what we have been asked to find. Let us just uh, check. So, we have been asked to determine the final state, we have determined the final state to be the A and superheated state and we have also evaluated the work done during the process. 
So, again uh, when you solve um, problems like this or do an analysis of problems like this, you must always remember uh, the way in which we develop the material. For a two phase mixture, first identify the two properties whose values are known and once you identify them, we locate the state. Once we locate the state, we can then evaluate the property. Uh, other any other property whose value is required. So, that is the sequence that we follow. Okay. Let us go to the next example which is somewhat more involved. Okay. So, basically we have an insulated piston cylinder uh, arrangement with a metallic partition in between. So, this is a metallic partition, very thin partition does not store any energy. Okay. It is rigid. So, it remains flat and it does not store any energy, but it is a metallic partition so that T A equal to T B all the time. So, the temperature on both sides are always the same. Okay, So, that is what the metallic partition does. So, the initial state is given uh, uh, in uh, compartment A, we uh, initially have steam at 5 bar 180 degree Celsius. You know that since pressure and temperature are given that uh, this must be a superheated state because the, uh, you know, that I think is easy to follow. Uh, by now, you should be able to do that. Okay. So, the volume is also given. Notice that volume of compartment A is given to be 0 0.2023 meter cube and as the process takes place, the volume of compartment A remains the same because the metallic uh, partition uh, is rigid and remains so. So, the working substance in A undergoes a constant volume process. So, that much we can infer from the given information. Compartment B initially has a volume of 0.2 and contains 2 kg of a saturated mixture of liquid water and water vapor. So, the uh, information that is given is the specific volume is known initially and it is also given to be a saturated mixture. Okay. So, we now add heat to this until the pressure becomes equal in both compartments. Bear in mind that the temperature is always equal in both the compartments, but now the pressure is also uh, at the final state the pressure has also become equal. And we are asked to calculate several quantities here A through uh, D and also the amount of heat that is transferred. So, the initial specific volume in compartment B is 0 0.1. It is um, uh, it's initially at 180 degrees Celsius because this is initially at 180 degrees Celsius. Since the temperatures are the same, this is also at 180 degrees Celsius. Okay. So, the temperature is given to be 180 degrees Celsius, the specific volume is also given. So, you should be able to uh, determine uh, that this is indeed uh, a two phase mixture and also that the saturation pressure corresponding to uh, this <coughs> uh, temperature is 10.02 bar. Okay. Let us just quickly go to the uh, temperature tables and verify this. So, this is the uh, superheated table. So, we have temperature table now and uh, the temperature uh, is given to be 180 degrees Celsius which is this. So, the saturation pressure is 10.02. Notice that the specific volume of the saturated uh, vapor is itself 0 0.1940. This is 0 0.001. So, the initial specific volume lies between these two. So, it is a saturated mixture and since it is a saturated mixture, its pressure is equal to the saturation pressure. So, the initial pressure in compartment B is thus equal to the saturation pressure corresponding to 180 degrees Celsius which is 10.02 bar. Okay. So, we can then retrieve the following values from the steam table and the initial dryness fraction in compartment B may be evaluated like this. And uh, 5 bar 180 degrees Celsius you should be able to easily show that this is uh, that the state is superheated and we may then retrieve the following values from the superheated table. Okay, 5 bar 180 degree Celsius. Uh, let us just see once how this is done.
5 bar 180 degrees Celsius. So, this is the uh, this is the location in the table V 1 is this and U 1 is also equal to this. Okay. Now, the mass contained in um, uh, compartment A may be evaluated from the specific volume and the volume uh, of the compartment itself by using this relationship. So, it comes out to be 0 0.5 uh, kg. Now, if you look at the uh, uh, pressure in compartment B, this is due to atmospheric pressure plus pressure due to weight of the piston, both of which remain constant during the process, which means that the working substance in B undergoes a constant pressure process. Working pressure in, uh, I am sorry, working substance in compartment A undergoes a constant volume process and the working substance in compartment B undergoes a constant pressure process. Okay. So, if we were to sketch the process at least qualitatively on a PV diagram, uh, let us uh, yeah, let us try to do that here. So, if we sketch this qualitatively on a PV diagram, so this is 10.02 bar. So, initially this is uh, the state in compartment A and, and this is 5 bar and the initial state in compartment B is over here. So, this is 1 comma A. So, the working substance in B undergoes a constant pressure process which looks like this and the working substance in A undergoes a constant volume process which looks like this until the pressures become equal. So, this will be the final state. So, that is state 2. So, now if you look at um, uh, the information that is available about the final state, okay, pressure in compartment B uh, remains constant. So, the final pressure is equal to 10.02 bar. Okay. Now, uh, now the final pressure in A is also equal to 10.02 bar because the final pressures are the same. Now, the specific volume uh, in compartment A remains the same because it undergoes a constant volume process. So, we have uh, two uh, property values at the final state 10 bar and 0, 0 0.4045. Okay. So, the fi so final state in A is superheated, this can be easily established, and the final temperature comes out to be. 607 degrees Celsius again from the uh, superheated table with uh, linear interpolation. Now, since the temperature in both compartments are the same, final temperature in B is also 607 degrees Celsius. And as this uh, illustration indicates, the final state is the same in both compartments. So, there is no separate 2, uh, 2B and uh, 2A. The final state is uh, the same because it lies at the point of intersection of this isobar and this. Uh, ISO core or constant volume line. Now, I take uh, compartment A and B together as my system. So, we take uh, this to be our system. And apply first law. Since the uh, partition does not store any energy, I may write delta E equal to delta U, which is nothing but the internal energy of the working substance in A and B. There is no uh, storage of internal energy in the partition and there is no Ke and Pe change also. So, delta E becomes equal to delta U equal to Q minus W. Uh, there is no displacement work in compartment A because it is at a constant volume. But there is displacement work in compartment B because it is a constant pressure process. So, we may evaluate the work interaction uh, very simply using uh, this expression and it comes out to be 610.218 kilojoules. And the internal energy change may also be evaluated quite easily and that comes out to be 3576.87. So, the total amount of heat that is transferred comes out to be 4187.088 kilojoules. 
Okay. So, once again you uh, can see that with the given information we try to draw a PV diagram or any other uh, coordinates. PV is simple. So, we draw a PV diagram, try to locate the state and also try to sketch the process uh, at least qualitatively uh, on this diagram. Fill in the information as you keep proceeding with the analysis. Initially, we uh, fix the states and try to uh, put in as much information into this diagram as possible with the given information from the problem statement. Then as we go through the analysis, we fill in more and more information so that you get clarity. So, once you have the system identified and then you also uh, enter as much information as possible into the PV diagram, the analysis becomes that much easier. So, the last example that we are going to look at is uh, this one here. So, we have an insulated uh, uh, rigid vessel of volume 500 liters. So, this is the insulated, so this is the insulated uh, rigid vessel uh, volume 500 liters which is initially evacuated. It is connected to a line in which steam at 20 bar 400 degree flows through a valve. So, here is the line in which uh, steam at 20 bar and 400 degree Celsius flows. It is connected through a valve uh, to this line. So, we open the valve and steam is allowed to slowly flow into the vessel until the pressure inside uh, is the same as the line pressure which is 20 bar and then we close the valve at that instant. We are asked to determine the final temperature inside the vessel and the mass that enters. Uh, heat loss may be like, uh, neglected because it is given to be insulated. Ke and Pe changes may also be neglected. You may recall that we had already looked at uh, an appropriate uh, system uh, for this case and uh, that system uh, looked like this. So, the system looked like this. So, this is the mass So, this is the mass that enters from the line which we will uh, label as M line. So, that is the initial system. In the final state, uh, this part of the system, uh, system boundary uh, diminishes altogether and we have only this part that is left. So, this was um, discussed in the beginning of the uh, course when we discussed definition of system and different examples for uh, system. Okay. So, now, so, that is our system. So, if we apply first law to this system delta E equal to delta U, no Ke and Pe change equal to Q minus W, Q is 0 because there is no heat loss and the vessel is completely insulated. Now, notice that W is not uh, 0, uh, there is deformation in this part of the system boundary, no deformation in this part of the system boundary, but deformation in this part of the system boundary at constant pressure. Okay? So, the displacement work uh, may be evaluated quite easily. The constant pressure is nothing but P line. And as I said, you know the, uh, the part of the system boundary in the line uh, disappears altogether at the end of the uh, process. So, that means the volume occupied by the system, uh, this part of the system is 0 at the end of the process. So, we end up with something like this. And um, <coughs> So, uh, notice that U1 uh, is the specific enthalpy of the, um, uh, notice that this term here delta U, uh, this is actually uh, M times U2 minus U1 where M is the mass of the system. But in this case, since the uh, vessel is initially evacuated, the mass of the system is equal to whatever mass uh, that is going to enter from the line and uh, U1 is equal to U line. This is the uh, specific internal energy of the mass that is going to enter from the line. So, U1 is equal to U line or in fact, you may if you wish, you may actually rewrite uh, this itself. Delta U for the system may be written like this delta U in the for the system part of the system in the line plus delta U in the vessel. 
since m is equal to 0, uh, since this is initially uh, um, evacuated, we, um, uh, we take that part to be 0. So, basically we end up with something like this. But notice that finally, uh, the uh, steam that was in the line will actually enter and occupy the complete vessel. So, you have to be uh, careful with how you do the analysis. So, we uh, expand this u2 minus u1 like this and if we rearrange this, take this term uh, to the uh, left hand side and rearrange, we get something like this. Notice that u line plus p line v line is equal to h line. Okay, that is uh, the enthalpy of the fluid that is flowing in the line. So, the specific internal energy of the steam that is finally in the vessel is actually equal to the specific enthalpy of the steam that is flowing in the line. Okay. So, uh, steam uh, for the steam flowing in the line, the pressure is given to be 20 bar, temperature is 400 degree Celsius. So, we can get H2 uh, H line to be equal to this from the uh, superheated table. Now, for the steam that is finally in the vessel, again we know uh, two uh, values for two properties. We know that the state is superheated. Final state of the steam of the uh, working substance in the vessel is uh, superheated. So, we can easily get the final temperature to be 575 degree Celsius. Okay. Notice that the steam in the line flows at a temperature of 400 degrees Celsius. However, the steam in the vessel is at a higher temperature 575 degrees Celsius because of the fact that the specific internal energy of the steam inside the vessel is equal to the specific enthalpy of the uh, steam that is flowing in the line. So, basically what has happened here is that the work that was done by the steam in the line to push this amount of steam into this is also now included in the specific internal energy of the steam here. So, there is work that is being done and there is also internal energy of the steam. So, the work that is being done is now being added to the internal energy of the steam and that is why the steam here is at a higher temperature than the steam in the line. So, what we will do in the next lecture is uh, uh, start uh, our discussion of first law of thermodynamics for a control volume. So, so far we have looked at first law uh, for a system undergoing a cyclic process as well as a non-cyclic process and we have applied first law to analyze uh, many, many different examples. Okay? Some of them involving ideal gases, some of them involving uh, two-phase mixtures of refrigerant or uh, steam uh, or water and water vapor. Okay? Uh, so, for all these problems, we could uh, use the system approach quite comfortably and uh, complete the analysis. But there are certain problems for which a modification of the system approach is required to make the analysis part easier. We will not be deriving a new form of the law, we will simply modify the system approach to uh, come up with an alternative form of first law that can very easily be used for the analysis of these types of problems. We will take it up in the next lecture.